Hi guys, this is One in a Million. Welcome to another episode of More to Life Than Mondays. Thank you so much for watching. Here I am at the lovely Animal Kingdom Lodge for my series of Walt Disney World videos. Today I'm going to be talking about my top three favorite childhood Disney films, how they influenced me and how they're represented in the park. So first off, um, I'm going to say, well, obviously, I guess growing up as a child in America, I would definitely say Disney films are a huge influence in my life. So my first favorite Disney film would have to be Mulan. And um, I love Mulan. She is very inspirational. And it's a great movie. It has memorable musical numbers. Just a great storyline about, you know, like growing up, finding yourself. And, you know, just it has great family values. It has great um, lessons on what it takes to become a team and working together. Um, so I really love that about that movie. You learn about courage. You learn about friendship. You learn about family values. And I mean, how can you not love Mulan? She's the only princess that saved a whole country. That's pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, growing up, I watched Mulan so many times. It was great. My friends liked it too. It was very influential for me because I was able to see uh, diverse representation on screen as well as just that kind of motivated me to become a strong female. Um, also, um, Mulan is represented in the parks actually here in Walt Disney World. So if you go to Epcot in the World Showcase where all the countries are, there's a China Pavilion in the giant gazebo like dome um, right before the Impressions of China 360 Circle Vision show. You can meet Mulan and take pictures with her. I believe sometimes Mu shoes with her, but most of the times it's just her. Uh, another place where Mulan is represented in the parks is in California Adventure in Anaheim, California. Um, during the Lunar New Year Festival, which occurs sometime between February through March, uh, Disneyland celebrates the Lunar New Year Festival. It's a lot of fun. They have different celebrations and acrobats and drummers and all kinds of things. And then Mulan has her own show, her Lunar New Year procession. So she comes out with Mushu. They dance to songs and it's really cute with performers. Um, and then she also has a meet and greet there when she's not doing her show, which is pretty great if you want to meet Mulan, take pictures with her. Then next, my second favorite Disney movie I would have to say would be The Lion King. Very appropriately said as I'm staying here at the Animal Kingdom Lodge where all the decorations are pretty much The Lion King. The reason why I find this movie to be influential in my childhood and why it's one of my favorites is because just growing up, I watched The Lion King so many times. What I love about The Lion King now, which I found out obviously later as an adult, if you guys didn't know, Lion King is actually an animated adaptation of Hamlet. So if you pay close attention, Simba's actually Hamlet, but in lion version, they, you know, made it into their own thing, but it's already been confirmed. And that's pretty cool because Hamlet is my favorite Shakespeare play. It has a lot of great lessons. It has a, obviously a great story, great voice actors. Um, Timon and Pumbaa are hilarious. You know, growing up, I love that. And I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but you know the scene where Timon and Pumbaa are eating bugs and they're introducing Simba to eating bugs? The way they animated those bugs with the sound effects and the, the drawings, they looked good. Like I remember being a kid and looking at that dung beetle or looking at the beetle they were eating like it was some sort of blueberry. It looked delicious. The music is amazing. I mean, Elton John making music for a film is already pretty up there. Cough, cough, the road to El Dorado, love it too, but this is a Disney episode, so we're not gonna talk about that right now. Ways the Lion King is represented in the parks actually so here in Walt Disney World um, 
first example, Animal Kingdom Lodge, everything is decorated, the Lion King, even the curtains in your hotel room. It's pretty amazing. If you come here to Walt Disney World and you go to Animal Kingdom, there's actually this show called Lion King the Musical and oh my god, it is a Broadway style show. It is amazing. It'll blow your socks off. I remember the first time I watched it, this was me. So, you know, good things, good things. You can expect good things from that show. Um, just the vocals, the the animatronics, the way it's put together, the, it's just so unexpected and the way they surprise you is pretty amazing. So if you guys go, I know I already said it in the weekly travel Wednesday, but you guys should definitely go to Animal Kingdom and check Lion King the musical out. So you can meet Timon right outside Pandora when you like pass. It's gonna be, he's gonna be on the right side of the entrance to Pandora right before you start going in in Animal Kingdom. So that's really fun because Animal Kingdom pretty much is centered around the Lion King because that was the only really like African animal safari Disney movie back in the day when it was first created. Yeah, so that's that one. And then my third favorite childhood Disney film would have to be this one's a little underrated, The Sword in the Stone. I know a lot of you might not know it. It's kind of a cult classic and I don't know why because that film is amazing. I watched it so many times as a kid, it was hilarious. Especially there's this one scene that I wanna call out where um, Merlin is grabbing all his stuff to go with Arthur before he's King Arthur on his adventures so that he can prepare him to become a king that he will be later on, but he has to go through lessons first. Um, so he's gathering all his stuff and then he gets his wand tangled with his beard and you know he has a very long white beard so he gets tangled around his face his neck and then the the wand is in the way so he's trying to get the wand out but instead of like pulling down he pulls out and he's like oh, and then it the his beard instead of going down it like puffs up and i remember as a kid every time i watched that scene it was hilarious i would laugh my socks off and i would rewind because yes back in the day I'm not that young guys. I watched it on VHS tape. I would rewind, I would play, and I would see the scene where he puffs up his beard again and again and again. It was hilarious. I loved it. Um, and also just the way it's animated, the little stories. I like the adventures they go through, like when they were squirrels, when they were fish. It was just a very entertaining film that I loved as a kid. So ways that the Sword in the Stone is represented in the Disneyland parks, Actually, in Disneyland, Walt Disney World, and I believe Disneyland Paris also, when you cross the castle, when you go through the castle into Fantasyland, you're gonna see the carousel, and then right in front of the carousel is gonna be literally a stone with a sword in it, the sword in the stone. And um, actually, back in the day, when Disneyland first opened, it became a thing that Merlin would come out, and you know, he would have his little show, his ceremony with kids go up, and try to pull the sword and then one of them would be able to and would be crowned the like king or queen for the day um that doesn't really happen anymore merlin doesn't come out at least in disneyland that i know of um i'm not very sure here in walt disney world so we might have to research that but disneyland's currently doing a series of 50s throwback nights it's a ticketed event where they rethemed Disneyland to be back like how it was during the 50s, so they bring back a lot of old characters that haven't been in the parks for a very long time, since maybe even the beginning. So, <clears throat> one of the characters they bring in is Merlin, and they do the whole ceremony just like back in the 50s, which is amazing. So, if you guys see the 50s After Dark next event, it's like a series that they do like once a month, once every few months. Um, they pick a day and then you can buy a ticket and go into the park and everything's open, but it's after dark. Um, they used to do that back in the 50s in Disneyland too, so, and they pretty much bring back everything when Walt Disney was still here. Right now, um, if you go and Merlin isn't there, the sword in the stone is still there and you can still pull it and people, it's like a photo place where you can take pictures of you trying to pull the sword out of the stone. I believe it's not as common for them to let you pull it partially out of the way anyway, but it's not as common anymore, but that's a place where it's represented in the park, so that's a lot of fun. 
All right, so those are my top three childhood films. Recap, one more time, Mulan, Lion King, and The Sword in the Stone are my three favorite childhood Disney films. It was really hard to pick, honestly, guys. Um, I love so many of them, and I was just picking my three favorite childhood films that I remember. I know I had more, but I was kind of trying to also show some that were represented in the parks. But yeah, other than that, I hope you guys love this episode. Um, I'm having a lot of fun here in Walt Disney World making this series for you guys, so I hope you guys really like it. If you guys like this kind of videos, make sure to subscribe down below for more content in the future. Make sure to like this video so that I know that you like this kind of content. I can keep making videos for you guys. Make sure to comment down below, let me know. Are any of these three films that I mentioned your favorite childhood Disney films as well? And if not, let me know down below which are your top three favorite childhood Disney films. Also make sure to follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, to get more updates on my channel, what's coming up, what will be up, what has been up. Thank you so much for watching guys. See you next time.